Ladies and gentlemen, can you please fasten your seatbelts? Get your seat up in the upright position and, well, turn off all electronic devices. I'd really like you to be present for these few precious minutes that we're about to share here together. You're going to be taken on a little trip here. You're going to be taken on a trip around the world. And on this trip, you're going to get a chance to see how unexpected connections can make the seemingly impossible possible. Wait, I'm getting a, a message here from your captain. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Connected Air. This true story is going to end with a happy beginning. Enjoy your flight. Just 12 short months ago, I was a slave. I was a slave to a job that was toxic and was killing me. I was also a workaholic, and I had a lot of trouble managing life-work balance. But a very, very good friend of mine, who's with us tonight, Alan, just kept on nudging away at me. He saw me having this struggle and he said, Tony, just why don't you come on down to the climbing gym, get some exercise, do a little living. And I wanted to go, I, I really did, for all those months that you asked me to, but I just couldn't get over myself. I, I just felt this work is too important and I, I, I just can't get away, I just don't have the time. But finally, in December of last year, I got to the climbing gym. And that was the beginning of something pretty cool. Because at that gym, I met a gentleman named Ian Rosenfeld. And Ian's another really interesting guy, he's actually studying creativity. And he said, Tony, you know, you could probably benefit from learning some things about creative problem solving at this time of your life. I was interested. I said, sure, man, totally. So we went through this process, and uh, I, I did, in fact, learn a number of interesting things. But I've got to tell you, taking off is not always easy. It starts really, really slowly. You've got to get fuel for your engines. You've got to fire those engines up. You need a lot of energy, and you, you need a destination, and you, you've got to be organized. And when I started, I didn't have any of that. I finally got the courage to get out of this killer job just 11 months ago, at the end of January 2012, which I'm very proud of. Thank you. <laughs> but at that time, to be honest with you, I was a total wreck. Okay, I actually couldn't even do any work for more than a month of any kind, because I was exhausted spiritually and physically. And, and when the chance came to do some work, I did whatever came my way. So I would, you would have seen me doing construction, pulling insulation out of kitchens, or some acting, falling back on an old career. Uh, I also did a little bit of bartending, and just whatever came my way that could help me stay afloat, pay the rent, you know? And, and it was tough. There were times in this year when I was completely filled with self-doubt, and I thought, what on earth have I gotten myself into? But getting back to Ian, one of the coolest things about working with Ian is that he suggested I check out this cool little new event called Mo Mondays. And I found a gentleman online called, named Michelle Niray, your gracious host and MC, and he agreed to let me come on stage in April. So I presented. I brought my juggling equipment and did a little talk, and I was pretty happy with it. And afterwards, I met another influential gentleman by the name of Tim Hurston, who's also here tonight. There you are. And I can remember, I can remember shaking Tim's hand because he had this, you know, Tim's got this energy that's pretty fantastic. And as he shook my hand, he said, you're coming to Mind Camp, right? <laughs> Mind Camp? What's Mind Camp? It's like, you know, Toronto's Creativity Conference. You think, uh, think of the Skoka chairs and up on Lake Kuchiching. It's just this beautiful setting and we bring together the most creative minds from all over the world. You've got this juggling thing going on. You might find this very interesting. And interested I was. So I was getting pretty excited about this, and I applied to present. But unfortunately, they booked all their presenters. <laughs> However, Tim was great, and he said, you know, well, we booked our presenters, but we have this little thing called night flights. And, um, you know, that's just where you can still come to the conference and deliver your own little one-hour workshop. And it's not really officially part of the program, but I saw it as kind of a foot in the door. So no, I couldn't present in a full role, but... I could still go to the conference and still do a small presentation. It seemed like an opportunity to me. So I went to great lengths to put together my Juggle Your Focus workshop, whereas 
I was mentioned in the introduction, I, I teach people to juggle while I help them improve their focus. And through the summer, there were some more challenges. There was some turbulence, if you will. Again, that self-doubt crept back in. And I still started to think, okay, I've got this great presentation coming up, but I, I, I'm totally getting overwhelmed with these workaholic tendencies again. You know, I, I'm going to loads of events, I'm working when I can, I'm scraping by on the rent, but I'm totally stressed out. Like this, what's this entrepreneurship all about? Like this isn't how I want to live, you know? I was frustrated, like really frustrated. But finally, I got myself to mind camp in August of this year. And some beautiful, magical things happened there. Have you got your seatbelts on? Yeah. So I did deliver this workshop, and it went wonderfully. It went so well that one gentleman who was in my workshop from South Africa said to me, he said, Tony, your workshop really spoke to me, and, and the messages you del delivered there are, are really important, and you know, I think you should, I think you should have lunch with me tomorrow. Of course, man, thank you so much for the compliment. Absolutely, let's, let's hook up for a meal. But you need to understand that MindCamp is not just your average conference. Uh, when I say some magical stuff happens, that's really quite an understatement. Uh, this was my first creativity conference. What I learned there is magical connections are made. You, you meet people who you can speak to on levels that you never even imagined were possible. So at the end of the conference, I was, to be honest, I was kind of overwhelmed. So the next day at 7.35 in the morning, when Francois sent me a text message, saying, hey, would you like to meet up? I came about this close to saying no. Because I thought I just needed my rest and just wanted to digest all of this new stuff. And I kind of shook myself out of it. I thought, well, wait a minute. I mean, this guy's a traveler. He, he's visited, visiting from South Africa. And I agreed to meet him. Yeah, of course I'll go meet him. I don't know when I'll see him again, but yeah, let's go have lunch. And that was the best decision. I've ever made in my life. Because during that lunch, on that late August, end of August sort of morning, uh, we both kind of came to life. And we were spilling over each other with words about all the exciting things that we had just experienced. And what I believe in some kind of moment of inspiration, Francois was adamant, he was pounding the table. He said, Tony, you've got to get to South Africa. I can see it in him. He could see something in me that I couldn't see myself. I said, Francois, thank you so much for your compliments, your graciousness, and I, I'm thrilled that I had an impact on you. But man, I'm spent. Like, I haven't done a lot of paid work this year. I've invested more than I could afford, actually, in my professional development. I'm all tapped out. And he said, Tony, look, man. He shook his head. He said, when you're all tapped out, you don't stop learning or growing. You just become more resourceful. I thought, wow, that's awesome. Thanks. Uh, how do I do that? I said, look, just email the director of that conference. He presented there while you were there. Cobus Needling. The name sounded familiar. He said, yeah, man, he was, he's the one who did the courage workshop. And you, you never know, perhaps he saw you doing some extracurricular juggling with the kids or around the campfire. Just send him an email. And I accepted that challenge. I accepted that challenge. But to be truthful, it took me a couple of days to build up the courage to send off this email. Because I learned very quickly that Kobus is an incredibly accomplished professional in the world of creativity. And I thought, there's no way this guy up here is going to respond to little old me, my first year in business. But what do you know? 24 hours later, I got an email from Cobus saying, no, you can't come to our conference. <laughs> he was very gracious as well, and he said, no, our, our conference has been fully sold out for four months, and we don't need any presenters, we don't need any volunteers. Do you know that saying, it never hurts to ask? So I think actually that statement should be changed to, it's always good to ask. Because it certainly was good for me to ask Tim if I could present at his conference. It got me that little foot in the door, that little no but. And to continue reading this email, it said, no, no, uh, we, we don't need your help at our conference. However, 
but why don't you contact Nina Bachman? She's in charge of the education conference that also happens right here at this little resort. It happens right before my conference. Maybe they could arrange some sort of sponsorship for you. And at that time, the wheels were starting to turn. I was thinking, holy moly, what's going to come of this unexpected connection and this meal with Francois? So, of course, I, I did, in fact, forward the correspondence to Ina, and I said the same sort of things. I said, I'd like to get involved with your conference in any way possible. Please let me know. This is your captain speaking. Uh, prepare for takeoff. Five days later, I got this email saying, Dear Tony, I'm sorry I didn't get back to you sooner. I was at a wedding. With regards to your application for sponsorship to the education conference, we've discussed this, and it has been approved. And in that moment, in that moment, I leapt up from my computer at my little apartment in Kensington, and I got outside, and I was screaming, and I was hollering, I was like, yeah, woohoo, I'm going to Africa, I am going to Africa, yeah, yeah, and the neighbors must have thought I was insane, and my roommate, if he could have come in, would have thought I was crazy, because I was on the ground, I had tears in my eyes, tears of joy, <laughs> sort of feeling now, tears of joy, because I knew in that moment, although I didn't know how I could possibly get to South Africa, I had no money for the flights, I knew in that moment that I was going to go. And I knew in that moment that this trip could be the tipping point that I so desperately craved for my presentation career. As I recomposed myself and got back to my computer, I went back to an email that had a few more pieces of good news. The email continued, Tony, you are most welcome to present your juggling and your focus workshop at our conference. And in fact, we've just gone ahead and booked you the full five days accommodation at the resort because you may want to present at the creativity conference as well. <laughs> Even though there's no full presenter's role, you can do that, that night flight presentation. Amazing. By the way, on the Tuesday night, every year of the education conference, we have a surprise keynote speaker. Cobus would like you to deliver that keynote. <laughs> And Kobus, who is in contact with a number of professional sporting teams, would like you to contact Paul True, a close friend of his. He's the very well-known, internationally acclaimed head coach of the South African Sevens A-side rugby team, the Springboks. He believes that Paul and his squad could learn some, some wonderful things from you. We look forward to having you at our conference. <laughs> And I was so excited that I actually physically had to pinch myself to see if I was dreaming. Like one of those moments that really was, oh, how could this all happen in one email? Like, give me a break, right? Pinch, pinch, pinch. Yeah, 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 I'm not dreaming, right? But upon further reflection, I realized, actually, this was a dream. Because I'd known for about 15 years that I wanted to get into presenting professionally. And in fact, in my visualizations and in thinking about it, I could see myself juggling and, and teaching people things about inspiration, about leadership in different countries. So I had had this dream before. And then I started to think, did I create this? Yeah. To this day, I'm not quite sure. But I do know that that dream came true. And I did go to South Africa, and I did do all of these things, and more. And it's my pleasure to tell you, as a result of the experiences I had in South Africa, I'm going to be presenting in five countries over the next 12 months. Not a bad start for a broke guy who's just got a lot of energy. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as we come down from an interesting flight here, we at Connect Air hope that you've enjoyed yourselves. But further to that, I'd like you to consider this little thing about unexpected connections. Because going back, none of this would have been possible if I didn't stay open to Francois' suggestion about having that lunch. That lunch that I was a little too tired for, or just wasn't ready for, but I thought, no, I should go do that. Okay? And if you go just a little bit further, actually none of this would have happened if I didn't go climbing with my buddy Al. So think about it as you're surrounded by about 100 positive people in this room. Who might have a message for you? 
And let's go beyond the room. Think about in your life, if you've got a friend or a colleague kind of nagging you to go do something new. Get out on the slopes this winter. Or do something that you know you should do, but you always seem too busy. Well, I think I'm living proof that it could be a very worthwhile thing to do. So consider your unexpected connections as we land now, and I look forward to asking you the next time I see you, are you ready to take off? <laughs>